Alright, welcome back to part 12 now, so hope you guys are enjoying the series so far. Today we're talking a little bit about UI, uh, local scripts, and filtering enabled. So today is a packed episode, but I'm going to try and do it all in under 15 minutes. So uh, buckle up for some fun content, because today is a really important one. Alright, so uh, before we do that, you, some of you guys asked for the comment questions to keep going. So I'm going to throw in some random comment question. What's your favorite meal of the day? Breakfast, lunch, or dinner? So go ahead and answer that in the comments. And now let's get on to UI. So uh, what is UI? First off, I'm going to show you um, an example of UI so that you can kind of figure it out. UI is user interface. That's what it stands for. And it is anything in uh, that's like a 2D um, user interface, like a button right here, right? I have this button that I can hover over and click on. So that is UI. How do you insert it? So well, first, um, instead of using a workspace, that's why I said everything 3D is inside of the workspace because everything 2D, the UI, is all in this thing called starter UI. So that is where all of your UI is going to be. So let's insert a screen UI into starter UI, uh, and a screen UI is what holds all of your UI. So uh, it's kind of like um, a folder for different types of UI. For example, this could be the shop screen UI. You could rename it to that. Uh, and then inside of there, you can insert a ton of different things that are UI, but let's just insert uh, three things, a frame, a text uh, label, and a text button. Okay. And now you can click them and you can drag them. Uh, all around. So as you can see, we have these three different things. This first one is a text label right here. It's not clickable, it just has text. The next one is a button, and it, you can click it and we'll make it do stuff. Uh, and this last one is a frame. So uh, let's go over the properties for um, UI. First off, there's the background color 3. You can change that. So as you can see, uh, I'm changing the background color for my UI. Next is the back background transparency. So this is a an integer from 0 to 1. It's just like transparency where 1 is fully see-through, 0 is uh, fully visible, and 0.5 is like something in the middle. So that is uh, tr background transparency. Uh, next, you can play around with some of these, but uh, there's also position. So you can uh, change these numbers to position them to, in different parts on your screen. Um, it kind of takes some playing around with it to get used to it, uh, but over some uh, over time you should be able to uh, get that um, get it down. And then also uh, with this, uh, there's also size, so you can change the size to be something like 200 by 200. So you'll see that there are two numbers, there's 0, 200 and 0, 200 or whatever. Um, and same with the position, there's two numbers, there's the first one and then the second one, then the third one and the fourth one. So, th these are differences between scale and offset. I can't really, like, go into all that right now. One, I'm not a UI person. Um, I'm just sh sharing basics with you guys. And two, um, it's just very complicated. So, if you'd like to, feel free to look, uh, look up and research about um, the position uh, with those two different... Um, uh, like size versus offset so feel free to look around uh, and then with the buttons you'll notice that if you scroll down a little farther in the properties there's this text so you can change the text to say hi I am a button I'm just showing you the basic properties of UI that you're going to use all the time so for this one you can see I've changed the text by changing the text property you can also change this to say text scaled okay so you can scale it so that it'll fit the whole button and uh, no matter how you size it, it should fit it. Uh, you can also change the text color 3 to be a text color, uh, di a different text color uh, like this. And you can hit OK. And same with the label, but we're not going to get into that. So now I'm going to go and delete everything but the button and uh, I'm going to resize it and I'm going to put it off to the side of the screen. And I'm going to change the text to be click me. Okay. So, let's go ahead and script this to do something when the player clicks it. So to do so, we're going to answer what's called a local script into the button. Now, before we start scripting this, I really need to uh, go over clients versus servers, and this is where things can get really complicated, so don't worry if this doesn't make sense. Um, basically, what, the reason we're doing a local script is because there are things called uh, local things, right? There are things that are stored on a client, and there are things that are stored globally on a server. So, for example, let me go ahead and hit play. And you should see all of this here. Um, this is the client. This is what I see. Every player has their own client, and they're all connected to a server. Now, all scripts run on it on the server, 
and all local scripts run on the client, okay? So um, if I had a local script, only things would take place for me because it's running on my client individually. But if you have a server script, like all this, the rest of this stuff, this is happening for everybody because it's happening in the server. So the server cannot see things for each client, but each client can see things from the server and from its own client, if that makes sense. You can switch between the client and the server right here by clicking current client. This is why I told you you need to, uh, if you're gonna change your leader stats, you need to go in the server because if you change this to say something really huge um, like that, and then you head back to the um, client, you'll see that it's changed. But let's say I did it uh, in the server, and I set it to be one. Oh, come on. One. Oh. <sighs> Having some trouble with this since it's changing every second. Goodness. Goodness. Okay. <laughs> there it is. Okay. So, as you can see, it immediately changed back to 4.7 billion. Or if I go back to the server and I set this to be one in the server, okay? So in the server, we now have this little bit of, uh, this a little amount of coins. And in our client, we can change this to be something huge, like 911 million, but it gets reset. And that's because we're doing everything on the server. Um, so I made the changes on the client and the server didn't see them. And remember, the server is what's controlling our leader stats. So the server still sees that we have 100 coins, even though on the client, I changed it to a billion, right? Uh, I hope that makes sense. It just takes some practice, so uh, make sure to practice with uh, clients and servers. Um, and you may be wondering, hey, why did why do we even have clients and servers? And it's mainly to um, stop hackers. So if I were to go, uh, if I was a hacker, uh, and this doesn't perfect um, anti-cheating and stuff like that, but if I was a hacker and I used some hacking software to come in here and just delete everything, well... Turns out, I've really just missed out on the game for myself, because everybody, the server is still this. So all clients still see what's on the server. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, we're about seven minutes into the video, and we haven't even touched on local script yet. So let's go ahead and get into them. So uh, let's open up our local script. And remember, things that happen in the local script only happen on the clients. So, for example, we can say script.parent. So make sure that the local script is inside of the text button. And we'll call this uh, script. We'll name it click script so script.parent.mouse button one down so this is a um, another event so this will happen whenever a player clicks the button or you can do mouse button two down and that's just whenever they right click it so right clicking is two and left clicking the uh, normal clicking is one so I always do mouse button uh, one down colon connect whoops function all right there we go. And now we can just uh, say print, or actually, let's change the text of this text button whenever they click it. So this is saying script.parent, remember the button. Whenever the button is clicked by a player, we can do whatever's in here. For example, we can say script.parent, the, but, the button, um, is, and then we can say dot text equals to you clicked me. Okay, so we're changing the text of um, this button, okay? So whenever the player clicks the button, we should see it change to, you clicked me. As you can see, we, it has changed, but if we go to the server, it still says click me, and that's because it only changes for the client. One more thing to note before we finish this, um, because I'm going to expand more on UI in the next episode. Uh, so... Each player has their own player GUI, so if you look inside of your player, inside of players, then your player, you'll see this thing called player GUI. And you can see shop, right? It'll have every single UI inside of it. So if you want to change um, UI from the server to a client, all you have to do is you have to ch tell the script on the server, hey, go into the players, into the player you're trying to change, into their player GUI, and then you can access all of it and change it. So for example, I'm in the server right now, and I'm on this uh, player GUI shop text button, and I can say, uh, let's just change this text to be, hey there, subscribe, right? Something like that. And as you can see, it's changed to, hey there, subscribe. And I could do it again, and it would click and say, you clicked on me, all that good stuff. So as you can see, we're changing things on the client, but not for everybody else, only for us. So in the next episode, we're going to continue to talk about... Um, 
local scripts and server scripts, and we're going to talk about how we can um, talk to the server, basically. We can say, uh, have something happen on the server whenever we click a button. So local scripts to servers, uh, server scripts, or regular scripts, and scripts back to local scripts, things like that using something called a remote event. So we could have a shop that says like buy uh, gear, and we could click it, and we could fire it to the server, and inside of the server, the script will create a sword and give it to the player, and then we'd switch back to the client. Well, we wouldn't. The server would do all that for us, and we would have a sword. But not just for us. We'd have the sword on the server, so every player would see us with the sword. I hope that makes sense. It just takes some practice, so um, I hope that was a helpful video. If it was, please do consider subscribing. It helps me out a lot. Uh, next episode is the last one, so I want to quickly mention uh, final game. The final episode of the series is always a final game where I take everything we've learned um, in the series and I make I show you guys step by step how to make a game with it. So what I'm thinking is we'll make some sort of um, color block style game. So it's kind of like an obby sort of, well not really, but we have like a pad with a ton of squares, okay? Um, and they're all different colors and then it shows a color and then you have to get onto that color and then everything else drops kind of like that fall guys thing but with fruit and uh, with colors instead of fruit uh if you have other ideas please let me know in the comments i'd love to hear your guys' ideas and suggestions i'm always open to changing that plan that was just what i had in mind um so if you guys have better better ideas let me know in the comments i am very happy to um take a look at those and uh consider other ideas so with that being said i hope you enjoyed this video um and we will continue UI, local scripts, server scripts, clients, servers, all that stuff in the next episode. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments or my Discord server. Either way works. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.